Hello again. My name is Nick Dutch. And the purpose of this particular video is to reiterate and crystallize the ideas surrounding the choice of my career. There are new people who have subscribed to this channel who are curious about the character that talks to them on an almost daily basis which is Nick Dutch and of course you may be curious about other video blogs I've set up other channels which are out there as well which are also owned and run by myself but I want to focus in on the subject of the bulk of my career and why in particular I chose it this particular video is thoroughly unrehearsed uh, I've not written down a script or anything this is just off the cuff so if you are the kind of YouTube user who would want to go through the video with a fine tooth comb uh, and find tons of logical fallacies I'm sure you'll find loads of them here okay because I'm not really putting any hard preparation into this video if I look back over my personal history there's lots of trains of thought which have happened okay and they've all had the potential to steer me in various different directions culturally socially academically theologically in terms of work or working in one industry or another industry and with the passage of time what I've managed to do is to accumulate more knowledge about different aspects of life which one needs full stop as well as to kind of like cut out the deadwood to remove from myself things which are less beneficial for my personal economic survival and also less beneficial for my psychological and emotional survival as well as more beneficial for me to feel the I'm doing what I think is right okay because some of the jobs I've had in the past uh, I did because I needed them but I did not do because I necessarily wanted to be that person sometimes you can find yourself being convinced either by your tutors or your you know the, the people in school or college or your parents or your friends that some careers are right and you should follow those careers and uh, that's one of the reasons why I worked in one of Britain's oldest most well-developed recruitment consultancies as well as working self-employed in recruitment as well uh, but that industry didn't quite satisfy me although I did quite well for a time but let's think back of why the interest in tarot why the interest in becoming a practicing psychic what was it that put the initial impact there uh, this goes back to when I was a child uh, I was obviously younger than the age six because uh, we as a family you know the, the royal we we as a family you know moved out of one particular house when I was six years old moved to a new uh, a new location a uh, village out in the countryside and prior to the removal date uh, I, and I think it was a couple of years prior to the moving date so I must have been about four years old at the time roughly speaking uh, something strange happened I was possibly younger than four I don't remember it was obviously a long time ago and this strange thing was what can only be described as a ghost experience okay uh, and the following night I told my mother well something strange happened last night and I described it and it was you know the outline of a woman in old-fashioned clothing down to the bustle okay appearing in the lights of the of my bedroom door and then steadily drifting away and vanishing and so my mother says to me you know I was a little kid okay she says to me maybe it was a ghost now the curious thing about this experience which I do remember quite vividly is that after that I said to my mother what is a ghost because I had not actually heard the word before I mean you can go through life and you can learn new words like clique or elite and or so on and so forth but you've got to find out what the meanings of the words are prior to being able to use them in language right 
I actually had not heard of the word ghost before. I had not come across the concept of life after death or anything even remotely philosophical in terms of like an afterlife or a heavenly uh, concept. But yet I had this experience being in a position of complete ignorance of the subject. Now, the impact of that experience and the realization that, you know, there was something funny going on here had had upon me was that I developed an interest in ghost stories. And of course, my parents very kindly obliged, I was obviously still a very small child, uh, kindly obliged through getting books out of the library uh, that was all, you know, ghost story orientated. They were quite cute and uh, little uh, pop-up books which were hoarded houses and that sort of thing. And it was, it was all quite fun, okay? There was a, a very pleasant and memorable part of my childhood. But, and this is a curious thing, you know, other strange experiences did seem to happen in my childhood, including things which I would now look back on as being astral projection type experiences. Okay? These things just seem to occur. Right, but about the time when I started middle school, uh, I, I stopped getting these experiences quite so much. And so I, I stopped worrying about them. I worried much more about trying to learn the mysteries of long division and how to get on with the pupils in school and so on and so forth. Uh, then, of course, secondary school came and I did the first few years of secondary school. But unfortunately, I came down ill with chronic fatigue syndrome, which is a condition which I still suffer from to a certain degree. Uh, and I had to be taken away from school and completed my education at home. When I was going through a particularly bad period of this health problem, I would learned about a form of meditation and I decided to practice it. One of the reasons I wanted to do it was because it was quite the, you know, the in thing amongst the, you know, the, the law of attraction type crowd at the time. You know, the young, upwardly up really mobile people who were very greedy financially, uh, very successful, but also very spiritual as well, was that if you were to do this particular chant or meditation, that more luck and success would come your way. And some people even attributed good health to it. So, hey presto, boom, I wanted to give it a whirl. So that's what I did. And that essentially started me, you know, looking into more New Age type concepts over the, uh, over the remaining, like, I would say, 10 years or so, roughly speaking. But I started doing this chant, and it was... Okay, nothing much happening, I observed what was happening inside my mind, and essentially calmed, you know, calmed me down, I stopped being stressed as much, I felt like I could concentrate a bit more, that was good. But, one day came, when my parents were out of the house, and I remember this quite distinctly, okay. This was uh, in, in the summer, and I was going to bed relatively early, because I don't have that much energy, because I was a chronic fatigue sufferer. I was preparing for bed, everyone was out of the house, I thought, I'll do this chance aloud. Okay, nice and loud, and I'll enjoy doing it. So I started doing this chant, bit by bit, and building it up in terms of volume and speed. And I went, nam, mam, meringo, keo, nam, mam, meringo, keo. And I varied it in terms of timbre and tone and the notes which I used. And I carried on doing it, and I built it up, and I built it up. And I had a stopwatch beside me. And I had that going, and I timed myself for a full 10 minutes. And as I was doing it, you know, a few thoughts started going on inside my head, you know. Wouldn't it be fun, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be fun if I was to, like, make a wish, all right? <laughs> Build up to a real crescendo, and then make a wish at the end of it, and just see, like, what the hell happens, you know. Just, like, just for fun, you know, just to make myself feel happy, the way that young people might... Do, I don't know. <laughs> or am I the only one? Either way, that's what I did. And the wish I made was I wish to see glimpses of the future in my dreams. And yes, I, I finished my chance. I said out loud, I wish to see glimpses of the future in my dreams. And I just laughed it off, you know, because it was obviously daft. All right, I was an atheistic person, right? Although, you know, I've been to a Christian school, I was not necessarily 
a follower of anything. Are you with me? Okay, I was, wasn't really a follower of anything. My, my mother was a hard atheist. My father may have believed in God, but he always kept his religion to himself. Um, so, that, that was it. I was essentially pretty atheistic. Or reasonably so. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you can actually, you know, dissect someone's brain and say how atheistic someone is or was. But I didn't believe in all that much. What happened after that moment was really rather strange. Because I ended up having moments during the, during the day. I mean, like, intense deja vu moments. When, it's, hang on a second, I was dreaming of this last night. You know, just like five minutes worth of time being recorded and being played back to me a few nights before, or five nights before. This is the experience I had. Now, you can, you can say, like, oh, Nick, you're deluded, you're insane, you can, you can say whatever you want. All I'm doing is telling you what happened, the experience. And this extreme deja vu carried on, and carried on, and carried on, and carried on. Even to the point whereby it was actually getting rather frightening for me. And some nights, I would actually refuse to fall asleep, or try to refuse to fall asleep, um, because I was terrified. What have I done? Have I un unleashed, unleashed something weird? Or, you know, what? I didn't understand. But it got me curious. There was a meeting I had with a few friends in a pub. I think I was a member of the scouting movement at the time, and us being rebellious people, yet, you know, believing that, you know, we're, we're in our late teens, we can go down the pub. <laughs> Uh, I went out and had a beer with a few friends, and there was this guy talking about, yeah, I've got this book on black magic spells somewhere, and, and I said, hang on a second, where'd you get that? Because I was now curious that, you know, someone could go somewhere where they could get books on this thing called magic. And I want to, you know, that just sort of like made me think, maybe that would actually explain to me what happened and why. Alright, uh, maybe it would teach me how to use whatever this stuff is, to be able to restore me to health. Because the medical profession wasn't really helping all that much. This was a very serious search that I was going through. Uh, and I really desperately, desperately, desperately wanted to have health. Probably more than I wanted anything in my life. Uh, would I have been willing to sell my soul to get health? Yes. Hell I would. I didn't get around to doing that, though. I just wanted to make that nice and clear, okay? But, yeah, I would definitely have, you know, gone to any lengths if I thought that things had worked out, you know, could actually do the deed and give me hell. Then I would have done it. But I'd have to be sure. I'd actually have to be sure. Now... The very fact I'd started looking out for this subject called magic um, was both a blessing and a curse. Okay, Because the more I looked into things which had the word magic associated with it, the more um, confusion I got. Because you've got, you've got the word used in many different ways. There's all these like self-developmental books written for middle managers and salesmen, which is called like the magic of thinking big or, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's all that, you know, positive thinking to the extent whereby you're motivated so you will actually stop being a lazy ass and get on the phone and make some sales calls kind of thing. Um, to some of the more extreme weirdo stuff from the New Age world of like the abracadabra spell and uh, drawing pentagrams on everything around you and, and so on and so forth, you know, which actually appears to be much more like the behavior of a paranoid schizophrenic rather than necessarily someone who has the power to actually control the universe. If you get much better, okay. Uh, I started going to these uh, pagan groups and that was curious. Again, these were people who used that phrase. Now, if you've been following my channel since the earlier days, you'll know there's one particular phrase which I really, really, really have an issue with, okay? And that phrase is, it works, when talking about supernaturalist magic, okay? It, it, it's, it's not a good use of language. But there was all these people who carried on saying, you know, it works, it works, it works. And I kind of like, um, 
try to study what they were saying. I tried to study it really, really, really hard. Um, and trying to build up a strong mental picture of what these people were about. Um, because I was a bit of a devious young person, and I think a lot of young people are a bit devious when you need to get your way, not when you want to, when you need to, uh, I realized that these people would not give me the ability to cure myself of my health problems, because they always talked about karma this and karma that, and they, they wouldn't actually help anybody because they were afraid of their karma. So I had to be a devious little bastard, basically. Uh, <laughs> and so I got myself involved with this, this, this group of people who professed that they were, you know, the great powerful uh, magicians and witches and all the rest of that. And I proceeded to have some of the worst experiences of my entire life. Uh, without the shadow of a doubt in this one particular witchcraft coven and with this one particular individual who unfortunately became my friend uh, at that time. I now look back on his character as being the character of someone who was rather excessively hurt uh, and he needed some kind of help and so he, he basically treated me really badly because that made him feel better and that was his way of getting better. Uh, mm. And it wasn't also, you know, it wasn't also helped by his interpretation of what Wiccan theology um, and beliefs was about because, you know, that, I, I, that's, that's a subject for another video, that really is, that really is. So I'm going to move away from that for the moment. Either way, what I did discover was one of the things that I wanted to, to, to try and find out. I wanted to get more experience about people and about what these ideas were, what people thought about this concept of magic, because either I was going to learn to become a great you know, Jedi Master kind of character, or alternatively I would understand properly what these people were talking about. And that would probably be, in some manner, useful, although I had no idea in what way it would be useful in the future. And of course, that is what I've turned into part of my YouTube career, so I have managed to get some benefits from it. Okay? But I was still left with my health problems. I was left with a lot of wasted time. Uh, and I realized that, I mean, during all the time I'd spent in the pagan movement, there was an awful lot of pain going around in, within those groups. To the most part, I would say, the intention amongst pagan people was reasonably good. Okay? But the way of thinking was not very good. I also went into a spiritualist church for a time because I wanted to get my head around mediumship. And I realized that there was an awful lot of pain there with things which had happened in these people's lives, uh, the way that they were thinking, and the fact that all these things were mounting on top of each other bit by bit, and was in some cases creating a lot of confusion and what appeared to be some forms of health problems. Upstairs health problems, if you get my drift. So, I started to develop empathy. I could not see occultists per se, as necessarily being, you know, my type or my people, you know, uh, I, I, it was not the question then of us versus them, although I had developed some strongly anti-Christian views at the time because I've been exposed to lots of anti-Christian propaganda. I wanted to try and use my presence within this movement to try and help people who were in this movement in one form or another. I realized that I personally felt responsible for the suffering of people in any religious and spiritual concept, which was a hard thing for me to feel. 
Was I personally responsible? Of course not. But I felt um, that burden of responsibility, which is a call to action. But everyone needs to be able to survive. So, commercial tarot reading was um, something that people do. And it could be used therapeutically in the future. Now, in Britain, counselling itself is not actually a heavily regulated industry. You can probably set yourself up as a counsellor with minimal qualifications if you're any good. There are various bodies who will probably try and shut you down if you're being a pain in the ass. But essentially, when, when we're talking about therapy, you could probably still be set up with very little regulation. And so I decided I would try and use this therapeutically. Uh, and after I had given a few other careers a really good going through, and I worked out that what I really am is essentially a tarot reader and an entertainer uh, and someone who wanted to communicate to the rest of the world and to other people. I made that, you know, I made that decision. You know, I, I expected there was going to be a lot of animosity from my family members when I turned around to them and I said, sorry, you know, with all that stuff about, you know, potentially, potentially becoming an accountant or a financial director. That's not going to happen because I'm not going to bother. I'm going to be a tarot reader. I kind of like sat there just waiting for the blows, you know, it's like the, all the kind of like, no, you're not, whatever, whatever. it didn't happen. And I said I got supported by my family. Now, I'd given the industry a go when I was a bit younger, and maybe then I wasn't quite right for it. When I say a bit younger, I mean about 18, okay? But now, with everything that I know and all the people I've helped across the world, and I mean across the world, we're talking about anywhere from Japan, Australia, America, UK, Europe, basically anywhere where there's English speaking people, more or less. I know I'm doing good and I know I'm doing what's right. Thanks for listening.